Good morning, this is Emma Code, meeting producer. I can confirm that we are now live. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this virtual meeting of the East Sub-Area Planning Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. When members are speaking, or sorry, first of all, today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may, if they wish, use their video. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be conducted at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will again adjourn for a short period to try and establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken by the Democratic officer with a roll call of members present who will answer for, against or abstain. The results of the vote will be announced by the Democratic Services officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest, or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that members of the committee who wish to speak on any item should indicate by using the raise your hand function using the raise your hand function, which will be monitored by the vice chairman, Councillor Adrian Parsons. Any members not on the committee or are unable to use the raise your hand function who wish to ask a question should indicate by typing an X in the chat box. Before to, we start today's meeting, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer Emma to ask the committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division. If we could also have introductions for the Cornwall Council officers who are in attendance. Pass across to you, Emma. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. It's Rowena here. Um, I will now call your name. Please confirm your name and your electoral division. Councillor Burden. Uh, Neil Burden, still Clemson. Councillor Craker. Uh, good morning, Councillor Nick Craker for Liscard North Division. Councillor Eddy. Good morning, Councillor Eddy, representing the St. Clair Division. Councillor Flashman. Good morning, Jim Flashman, Kelly Bray, St. Dominic and St. Melian <coughs> Division. Councillor Fitter. Good morning, John Fitter, Colin and St. Morgan. Councillor Holly. Good morning, Derek Holly, Saltash East Division. Councillor Jordan. Yes, good morning, Harry Jordan, Tintagel Division. Councillor Long. Good morning, Councillor Long, Callington Division. Councillor May. Good morning, Councillor May, Cameron West. Councillor Mould. Good morning, Carol Mould, Councillor for St Minver and St Andelian. Councillor Pascoe. Good morning, Councillor Jane Pascoe, Liscard West and Obwalls. Councillor Pugh. Good morning, I'm Richard Pugh from the Trelawney Division. Councillor Tamlin. Morning, Sam Tamlin, Saltash West. Councillor Parsons. Hello, Councillor Adrian Parsons representing the Alton Nun Division. Councillor Batters. Good morning, Chris Batters representing the Lenivet Blisland Division. Thank you. We also have Councillors Lennox Boyd and Dor in attendance. And the officers present today are Davina Pritchard, Group Leader, George Shirley, Senior Development Officer, Tracy Young, Senior Development Officer, Vanessa Ormerud, Lawyer, Emma Code is the Meeting Producer, and myself, Rowena Brebner, Democratic Officer. Thank you very much. In that case, if we get on to item one, apologies, please. There are no apologies, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, number two is declaration of interest. Anyone have any declarations they wish to put forward? No, I take it that's a no. Thank you very much. Uh, item three is minutes of the previous meeting. Can we have a proposer and seconder? Recommend the, the Chairman Jim Flashman. 
Proposed by Councillor Flashman. I'll second, Chair. Sorry, that was Barry. Yeah. Councillor Jordan seconding. Can we have a roll call on that one, please, Rowena? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Councillor Burden. Yeah. Yes. Are you sorry. for the, we're taking the vote for the minutes? Can you state okay. with the next four again? Yes, in favour, sorry. In favour. Okay. Councillor Craker. Abstain. Okay. Councillor Eddy. Four. Councillor Flashman. Four. Councillor Fitter. Four. Councillor Holly. Four. Councillor Jordan. Four. Councillor Long. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pascoe. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. And Councillor Batters. Four. Thank you. Those are carried. Thank you very much. In that case, we now move on to the agenda. Um, item one on the agenda is application PA20 stroke 082 land west of Lavender Cottage Bray shop and the application is being presented by George Shirley. Good morning George. Good morning chairman I'll just try and share my screen. Just checking you can all see that. Yes I can see that clearly thank you. Okay. OK, so this is application PA20 forward slash 08260, Lamb West of Lambda Cottage, Bray Shop. This is an outline application uh, with some matter reserved for a new dwelling. OK, so the key issues for this application is whether or not this is a suitable location for new housing with regards to the development plan policies. So the application site is located on the northwest side of Bray Shop and it's located in uh, an undesignated landscape area. Uh, so you can see Bray Shop here, it's a fairly well defined um, settlement with, with most properties fronting onto the road. The application site is located on the northwest side of the settlement uh, adjacent to Lavender Cottage, which is the applicant's property. Um, you'll note a footpath runs along the eastern boundary of the site uh, onto the highway. And again, moving on to the aerial images, um, you'll just note this is a, a kind of a typically rural um, village settlement. Uh, you can see the application site is a agricultural field, small agricultural field um, or a paddock. Um, just to the left hand side of it, I should point out, is now a, a sand school which has been constructed and you'll see that on the um, on the photographs, which I'll move on to in a minute. So these are the existing and the proposed block plans. Um, you'll note the proposed block plan is indicative only. Um, this is an outline application. Uh, and you'll note the, the sand school as well, which I just referred to on the previous slide. So looking at the photos, you've got the application site is on the left hand side of the image. <clears throat> and then the applicant property is on the right hand side. The red line incorporates this uh, driveway entrance here, but then the, the, the bulk of the red line application site is, is through this gate on the left hand side of the image. This is a view down the lane which fronts the application site. The application site is on the left hand side behind the large Cornish head. You'll see the car at the end of the lane, which indicates where that previous photo was taken and where the access to the site is. So this is a shot from within the site now. Uh, as I said, you can see it's, it's an agricultural field, fairly slack. Uh, flat uh, sloped slightly from south to north, so from the front of the site down to the rear. Um, but yeah, otherwise not too many features other than just being a, a, an undeveloped agricultural field. Um, the boundaries of the site are the, are the fences, which you can see. 
And again, a similar shot, just taken slightly to the left. You can see the adjoining sand school. Um, and again, the boundaries are just uh, kind of the Cornish hedge on the left and then the post and wire uh, fences on the centre and the right hand side of the image. So this is looking back to, towards where these previous photos were just taken. You can see the applicant's property on the left and then the application site is uh, the land on the right hand side of the image. And then a similar shot just taken further back to give you a bit of context. So you've got the application site centrally within the image, the applicant's property on the left hand side and the sand school on the right hand side of the image. So just to summarise, we do not consider the site to represent infill or rounding off and the site is not previously developed land. The proposal would represent an undesirable incursion into the open countryside and that's contrary to policy 3 and 23 of the Cornwall Local Plan. In our view, the limited benefits of the scheme do not outweigh the harm which we've identified in the report. And as such, our recommendation is one of refusal. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, you're on mute. Sorry, Chair. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, beg your pardon. Um, thank you very much, George. Uh, we move on to our first speaker, who's Carolyn Harding. Are you there, Carolyn? Good morning to you. Yes, I am. Hello. May Good morning. You have three minutes. You have okay. three minutes to give an explanation with regards to the application. We will give you 30 seconds warning before the end of the three minutes. So when you're ready, away you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. On behalf of myself and my husband, I'm speaking to you today to explain why we would like to build a bungalow for my dad, who will be close to 80 by the time the bungalow is built. He currently lives in a three-storey house on his own with two flights of very steep stairs. After the year we've all just had and the time I have spent looking after elderly residents living alone in Brayshop, I know that having my dad living next door to us is the right thing to do. I've seen firsthand that living alone without family nearby is incredibly isolating. I'm his only relative in the UK that can care for him in his later years as my mum died and my brother lives in America. We would like to build an energy efficient, carefully designed bungalow that enables him to live fully independently, but when his needs change, it will already be future proofed for this inevitability. Building one next door to us also frees up another property in the village. We believe the site is infill. There is only a 32 metre gap to the cluster of homes that start with Blackton and Springfield Lodge. There has already been development in this gap in the form of the SAM school at Springfield Lodge, which is for private domestic use, thus causing us to question the LPA's concern for maintaining open countryside here. It is full of brightly coloured jumping paraphernalia and has spotlights. These do not typify open countryside features. In the pre-application advice letter, our plan planning officer muted the idea that the site might be considered for affordable housing. Quoting directly from his letter, it says, being immediately adjacent to the developed envelope of the settlement might be considered an exception site for affordable housing stroke local needs housing. George Shirley has also said a similar thing to me, that they might consider one or two affordable homes and maybe one or two open market homes on the site. But we don't want to be forced into becoming property developers. We just need one nice home for my dad. I know for a fact that our immediate neighbours and the wider village would not support multiple houses. It doesn't make sense that the LPA is prepared to consider multiple houses here when they say one bungalow for my dad is going to have a negative impact on the open countryside. In our application, you'll see that we have noted a number of recently approved PAs that are similar to our situation. And so there is already a local precedent which the LPA are going against for our site. The parish council have said they would only support affordable homes being built on the site. But my dad wouldn't qualify for this as he's not on the housing needs register. And as such, it would make our application pointless. The MPPF emphasises the importance 30 seconds of, remaining. of villages needing to have incremental growth to keep them vibrant. And given that we have had so many letters of support from neighbours and no negative comments, it would seem that Brayshop residents view one new home as being a positive thing, causing no harm to the village or the local countryside. I know that we're in lockdown now, but we feel we feel the committee would benefit from a site visit to understand everything I've said today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. If you could hold on the line for a moment, there may be a question or two. Are there any questions? 
Are there any questions of the speaker for clarification, please? Jim here, I'd like to ask a couple, please. Yes, Jim, carry on. Um, good morning. Hello. Um, I, I noticed uh, a note from the footpaths that were um, trying to correct their assumptions. Are there any um, styles or gates on the footpath? No, essentially it's um, it's a, an ancient footpath, so it's not in use currently. It's not got a, any signage or any, uh, like I said, right of way, or well, it has got a right of way, obviously. And it only goes down to the bottom of our field and then it stops. So if anybody was to want to go on it, they would just walk down to the bottom of the field and back again. But that's actually technically on our Lavender Cottage side anyway. It's not actually on the field. So when we bought the house, we didn't own we didn't buy the field at the same time so the the footpath um is actually on our side anyway so obviously we would always allow anybody that wanted to come on and we would always maintain access but there isn't currently any signage for it and, and we've lived here for seven years nearly seven years and not one single person has ever come along and used it um fine if, uh, there's another question actually if the uh planning application was positive would you be uh able to put a hard um, boundary around the, the uh, application site, uh, namely a corner hedge possibly with some planting on it. Do you mean at the front of the property or well, on the site? Around it. I mean we could do, absolutely. I think one of the things I did want to make clear, I didn't have time to get it in, is that we don't want to remove that Cornish hedge that's at the front, absolutely not. Uh, we want we see that as being nice privacy for my dad, so it would be essentially tucked behind the hedge. It's going to be a low-level bungalow anyway, or house bungalow. Um, so um, absolutely, we want to make it a beautiful space for him that's private and discreet. So we would we would be happy yeah. happy to build extra hedgerows and, and planting etc. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Parsons. Question for Councillor Parsons, Adrian. Thank you, Chair. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Could you just confirm, is the sand school next door in your ownership or is that on the neighbour's land? No, it's, it's owned by Springfield Not Lodge. So they're our immediate neighbours and our two fields sort of butt up against each other. So the sand school is now directly next to where we would like to build a bungalow for my dad. Right, thank you. Thank you. Lovely. No other questions for the speaker for clarification purposes? Nothing shown, uh, Vice Chair? Looks like that's it, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, in that case, you can stand down if you wish, Caroline. Um, okay, and thank, thank you so much. Thank you for coming along, but you are able, of course, to stay on and watch it on live stream. Yes, will do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Uh, our next speaker is the divisional member, Councillor Dodge. Sharon, you are with us, I take I it? I am. I'm here, if you can hear me. You Hello. will have five minutes, at which I will expect you to have wound down by. Well, I'll so, only uh, five minutes. <laughs> good. Fine. Um, when you're ready, away you go. Thank you. OK, good morning, councillors and members of the committee. I can't really um, carry on from what Ms Harden has said because she's absolutely nailed it perfectly. But what I would like to say is if you come south side and join the main road a little way out towards Bray Shop, on the right hand side is a brand new development, low profile bungalow. It looks amazing. There's nothing wrong with it. Perfect. I mean, they should have built it in the middle of the road. It couldn't get it any closer. This site is back off the road and it has got all site and it's all got all um, services there as well. And uh, we've got a good access. There's nothing, nothing wrong with the access. Um, I would say it was infill because there is only 32 metres between one property and the other. I have actually had an impromptu site visit in the very short window that we had between lockdowns. And uh, I really can't see anything wrong with this site at all. Um, it's on the main, it's, uh, well, I'm sorry I said that. It's a modest home. Obviously, this is outline planning, but um, if it's sustainable, brilliant. Um, access has already been created, as she said. Um, and I think there's a serious lack of housing here for over 55, 60s uh, for the elderly people. We seem to think that we want to bung all these elderly people into care homes. Well, look at what's happening now with this lockdown. Um, and I think it's really important that uh, we have enough housing, sufficient housing stock for the over 55, 60s, 70s, 75s. It doesn't really matter what age. 
And we also have to future proof it so that if we need to have care, we need to have support, we need to have hoist, wide bathrooms, wide doors, um, wheel, wheelchair access, and that's an ideal site because no, none of us know if we're going to end up in a wheelchair. Um, I think um, there is plenty of uh, leeway there for the MPTF, there's growth. And you know, I, I believe that we should all support applications like this. If it was a, a suitable site for uh, local housing needs, so it could probably have two properties for local housing and two open market. I mean, that would be overproduction of the site. That would be out of keeping with a small hamlet. But I think what they're doing and their idea and their vision is quite well suited and I would like the committee to support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there are no questions of um, Councillor Dahl, we'll move to questions of the case officer for clarification purposes, please. Any uh, Councillor Parsons hand is up. Where you go, Adrian? Thank you, Chair. Hello, George. Hi, Adrian. There, George. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Just checking you there, George. Um, <laughs> George, as a local chap, you've obviously, I know the area reasonably well. Um, I've personally always considered Springfield Lodge to be part of um, the village of Bray Shop. I'm assuming you've come to a different interpretation on this. Um, I think the, f the pictures of the country lanes are somewhat misleading with the photo of the field which you displayed and the sand school. You could see Springfield Lodge in the near distance. Um, for you, what, what's your interpretation of it, George? Are you considering Springfield to be outside of the settlement? I'm assuming you are. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll bring it up on the screen. Um, that might help. But yeah, our, in our view, we we considered because you've got you've got a collection of, of properties here: Springfield Lodge, house, and cottages. Exactly. There are a it, few up there, aren't there? Yeah, in our view, the, these are more sporadic dwellings that detach from the quite well defined um settlement of Bray Shop. We think it's it's quite a, a well defined and, and coherent um cluster of properties around um the junctions of, of Bray Shop. we we feel that these um properties at Springfield are, are slightly detached and wouldn't form part of the settlement and will would be read more as sporadic development. Um, but yeah I understand what you're saying. I'll I'll go into these photos. Yeah, so I mean, you can you can see you can see the properties um, from the application site for sure, but in our view, um, the settlement stops at Lambda Cottage, and then moving on from then, it's it's just open countryside. Um, but these are always judgment calls, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'd agree with that, with it being a judgment call, and how we all interpret things differently. Mm. OK, OK, thank you. Are there any other questions for clarification purposes, please? Of the case officer, nothing shown here. Vice Chair, same with you. Chairman, Councillor Eddie has just raised his oh, hand. Yes, Marty just popped up. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, George, did, at any point did did you discuss with the applicant the possibility of uh, a development within their garden? That's quite a substantial garden, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I've I've had some kind of brief discussions with them over it uh, in terms of kind of the way forward if this application did get refused. Um, I, I, I mean, we've got to assess this application that's in front of us now. I don't think it's it's the ideal scenario for them. Um, I don't think we'd be wanting to see development in the in the rear garden. We'd, we'd probably be looking for development fronting the road, which would which would re reflect the the overall pattern of development of most of the properties which front onto the road um, rather than kind of more kind of backland rear garden development. Um, but we haven't had much more discussion other than just kind of, um, yeah, a brief chat about it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, George. OK, um, Councillor Fitter, John, good morning to you. Your question. Hello, John, are you there? You're I, I job. apologize. I apologize, oh, right. Chairman. I do apologize, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Um, it was George to say that um, there's been some suggestion that you may have indicated that this particular plot 
would be suitable for um, a development, a, a social development um, policy nine, I believe. Um, is that something that you would have looked for after? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll share my screen again, actually. Um, help. Um, yeah, this is this is something which was flagged up in a, in a previous pre-application um, inquiry, and it's something which I discussed with the applicant as well. Um, in our view, uh, we could look at a policy nine uh, rural exceptions development here. In our view, if we were to go down that route, it would be a, a small scale one, and again, it would it would be kind of small scale fronting the road set really within the same application site so it's, it wouldn't be a significant um, development um, we'd want it to respect the the scale of the settlement um, but in our view there is scope for that because we consider the site to be outside of the settlement boundary uh, we don't consider it to fall within the settlement so therefore anything outside um, would be would be viewed as an exception um, again we've only had preliminary discussions and i know that's not um what the applicants apply for at this stage yeah, thank you very much indeed thank you mr chairman thank you john no other questions for the case officer yeah uh, jim no, here, I'd like no. that. oh jim yes carry on jim um to the case officer um i i really um uh, don't understand that uh, you can support um a rural exception site because that surely would put more pressure on the uh, services and the access onto that road. Um, could you give me an answer to that, please? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think as I as I mentioned, it would. We haven't given that much more thought other than just preliminary discussions during the course of this application. And I mean, our informal view at this stage is would would be that it would be a very small scheme if if something were to come forward. Um, only a handful of properties at. at an absolute maximum, um, probably slightly less than that. So, I don't think that would that would create a huge um, demand for services or impacts on the highways, for example. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I don't think that would cause huge harm um, compared to the this current application, which is just for the one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, no other calls. Uh, no other questions shown. In that case, thank you very much, George. We will now. Oh, Councillor Parsons, your hand is up. No, sorry, Chairman, not for this, but for open. Ah, uh, right. Debate, okay, please. fair enough. In that case, we'll go into open debate, and that's what you're up for, is it? That's what I'm hoping to speak yeah. on, Chairman. Please. Okay, away you go. Right, as we've heard. Um, all these applications come down to a judgment call. We all have the same policy in front of us, but sometimes we have a different take on perhaps how others would see an application. I live reasonably closely to Bray Shop. Bray Shop is an interesting village, as we can see from the map in front of us. It's built out. Uh, and spread across the four the crossroads. Um, there's not exactly a set form, but there is a set pattern to how the development has or village has grown over time. Um, the the road to which or the access this site goes off from is a reasonably quiet road, but it, it's a more than adequate road to take a development or two. Um, as we've all seen from the the photographs and the site, site map, um, the site has a symmetry to it. There are dwellings on two sides of the site. And in fact, well, from that, we could almost consider it to be a rounding off site, but we do also have Springfield Lodge with, I don't think there's three properties at Springfield, um, just down the road which it, as far as I've always considered, that has been in Bray shop. But, you know, there is an argument it might be outside of the village, but we'll leave that where it is. Because I, I still still feel that this site 
complies with policy three as it is a rounding off site and it's immediately adjoining to the settlement as we've heard. Um, you know, we all know the reasons why sites are considered for exception sites or if they aren't considered to be in for the rounding off. But, but in this instance, I'm, I'm somewhat flabbergasted to think we could suggest we'll put three or four in there when in my opinion, there's no question one would sit more sympathetically um, with regards to the village. It would. I, I just don't see where the harm is. I don't see where the harm is. Um, I, in fact, I, I would be comfortable in moving this application to be to go against the officer's recommendation uh, and move it for approval. Chairman, can I come in there, please? Um, if you hold a second, Jim, we got other, I've got about five other, six others ahead of you. Um, Thank you. So you're you're proposing this application against refusal, Adrian, to start with. Yes. Fine. OK. In that case, we we'll move on now to Andrew Long. Councillor Long. Yeah, good morning to you. Um, I know this area extremely well, having been brought up about a mile and a half away for 20 odd years, so I know Brake Shop extremely well. Um, just listening to the comments that Councillor Parsons made, I think there's some queries on, on whilst I respect his judgment on it, that they, I might disagree with. First of all, um, Springfield has, has, in my view, in all my time being there, has always considered to be outside the village. Um, and if you look at Trefinic Farm, for example, which is on Trefinic Road, that is half a mile from the village, but it's still called the Phoenix Farm Bray Shop. So it's, but you would, nobody would consider that to be within the village boundary, um, but it is quite a distance away. Um, I don't think it's um, infill. I think the gap between that and Springfield is way too big for that. Um, so it would need to be looked at under policy nine. I'm not even sure policy nine would be applicable to it because um, the junction of that road Going out from from coming out from Exwell to the um, the the main road through Bray Shop is not brilliant at all. The vision to the right, heading out towards Code Green, is really really poor. There is a wall in the way there, so I don't believe that it will can. I, I don't believe it's policy compliant. Whilst I totally understand the reasoning of the of the applicant, we have to judge it on policy. We can't take into account um, anything else. We need to look at policy. And to my mind, there isn't a policy that supports it. Therefore, I will propose in line with officer recommendations for refusal. Fine. Thank you, Andrew. Moving forward to Councillor Holly. Derek. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm a bit disturbed about the discussion about the rural exception site because that comment can be made about any piece of land on any side of any village or town around. Um, so it's, it's not particular to this one. And the, the planning officer would have to uh, answer that honestly and say that if an application came up for uh, as a rural exception, they would have to consider under the uh, national planning framework. So but what, what uh, interests me, Mr Chairman, is that there's no parish council support for it. They object to it. It's not identified in the emerge within the prospective um, neighbourhood development plan, and nor does that neighbourhood development plan identify it as a rural exception site. It's not rounding off because it's not substantially enclosed, and it um, and because it does extend building into the open countryside. Clearly not in filling for the reasons which Andrew says, and and the sand score doesn't count because it's an agriculture development. So it's, as I see, it's clearly against the policy sort of you know, one three seven and possibly 23. So I was to second. Um, I just cannot see a justification for this in this particular site, Mr Chairman. So I'll support Andrew and second it. Thank you. Councillor Tamlin, Sam. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I was actually going to agree with Councillor Parsons. Um, it's definitely a judgment call. Um, I, I don't agree that um, the Springfield cottages and lodge and all of that are within the village. They're clearly outside, but I really do think this could be rounding off, uh, particularly with the um, with Blagden to the south. Um, 
I'm a little bit hesitant because the field extends much further to the north, but with a very good boundary and with the house being close to the road, I think it would be very much in keeping with the village. Um, so I'd like to second Councillor Parsons and, and say that it's rounding off. Yeah, fine. We can uh, come to that shortly because obviously we'll have to take the yeah. first proposal first. But uh, yes, certainly that's OK, Sam. Councillor Craig or Nick? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I don't want to go over too much of what's already been said. I do agree um, with uh, Councillor Parsons and Councillor Tamlin. I think this should be supported. Um, I, I do, in, you know, my view and my experience of uh, driving through Bray Shop, and I do consider this to be part of the village. So without going over old ground too much, I will be supporting um, approval of the application. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Councillor Fitter, John. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, no, I will be um, supporting refusal should we get to that, though. Um, what what really interests me about this piece of land is, and, and I don't know the area, so perhaps, you know, I have a disadvantage or I may have an advantage, um, but it, it's been subject to two previous plan application, uh, well, one pre-app, and then we had a planning application with a change of use of the land to a residential garden. And clearly that was refused and it was indicated that this was in the open countryside. So policy says in actual fact that we have to consider this application as it is presented us to us. And as Councillor Holly said, you know, if it was um, to be a, a, um, a policy nine application, we'd have to look at it different, but it isn't. It's an open market house in the open countryside. And policy says quite clearly that, you know, we cannot allow it. And if we start to micromanage boundaries artificially and create a further extension to the countryside, I'm not sure where it ends. We have to draw the line somewhere. And I believe Mr Shirley has done it very good indeed. He, he's indicated to us with the maps and the pictures exactly where, in their opinion, the open countryside starts. And so I have no hesitation at all in supporting the officer's recommendation, sir. Thank you. Thank you, John. Councillor Flashman, Jim. Yes, um, I uh, originally was going to second uh, Councillor Parsons' recommendation, but I'd like to point out that the rule, the main rule now, with the agreement of the uh, crossover of the boundaries, there's agreement to fund the 30 mile an hour flashing light, which has brought the speed limit down to the correct speed limit, which is 30 miles an hour. Most of them now are driving well less than that because the reminder flashing light comes up. Um, the uh, vision around to the right is reasonably good. Um, uh, everybody is uh, very hesitant coming out on that junction. They do all know that at times a fire engine or an ambulance will go through and they haven't got any restrictions if they're on a blues and twos. So, um, I think that if there was a hard boundary put around this uh, application, if it should uh, be approved, this would in actual fact create the start of any land, any more land being developed. And I cannot believe that the planning officer has made a statement about um, uh, more development on that land when he's against one development. I, I really don't see the sense in that. So uh, I shall be uh, recommending for approval. Fine, thank you. Um, Councillor May, Mary, good morning to you. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, yeah, I will be supporting the officer this morning. I do think there are other options open to Mr and Mrs Harding about their dad. Um, but do take on board the need why they need to build a bungalow. But there are other options open to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. According to my list, there are no, if you can all put your hands down, there's the ones who have spoken, please. But according to my list, there are nobody, no other hands gone up. Is that correct, Chair or Vice Chair? That's correct, correct, Chairman. Fine. In that case, we have, we have the proposal, the original proposal, is a proposal by uh, Councillor Long for refusal in line with recommendation, which was seconded by Councillor Holly. Now, is there any anything George or Tavina might wish to add to this, or do we take it as on the agenda? 
Um, Nothing for me, Chairman. Yep. Sorry, Chairman. Okay just for you. I'm sorry, Chairman, just picking up on some of the points um, that members have debated, um, and I just yeah. wanted to clarify a couple of those. Um, Councillor Flashman and I think some others referred to potentially creating a boundary around the site to create a stop for further development. Um, I just wanted to pick up on that point and just highlight that that isn't the intention of the policy or the Chief Planning Officer notes. Um, it clearly says that when we're considering rounding off development, proposals must be adjacent to existing development and be contained within long-standing and enclosing boundary features for example a road a cornish hedge or a stream um, so i just think members should be mindful of that and also mindful that if the application here is approved it does potentially open up um, or accommodate uh, proposals for further development on land to the west of the site um, in between this site and the sand school so that is something to be mindful of in 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 voting on this matter um, and i also just wanted to clarify the point in terms of rural exception sites um, there's been some comments that ha you know how can officers consider a rural exception development but not approve this for open market housing and quite simply that is the nature of our policy the policy is quite clear that on sites outside of settlements um, where the site is immediately adjacent to a settlement uh, we can potentially consider sites for rural exceptions development um, so that sort of is the, the background for the nature of the advice that um, George Shirley has given um, and if the scheme were to come forward for a rural exceptions development site it would have to be considered on its merits uh, nevertheless but policy indicates that potentially in principle there could be support for it. So I just wanted to pick up on those points. Um, thank you. Thank you, Davina. OK, so as I said before, we have a proposal from Councillor Long, seconded by Councillor Holly, for refusal in line with recommendation by officer. Um, can I pass it across to you, Rowena, for the roll call, please? Thank you. When I call your name, please indicate how you wish to vote, either for, against or abstaining. Councillor Burden. Um, for the officer's recommendation of refusal. Councillor Craker. Against. Councillor Eddy. For. Councillor Flashman. Against. Councillor Fitter. For. Councillor Holly. For. Councillor Jordan. For. Councillor Long. For. Councillor May. For. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Pascoe. Against. Councillor Pugh. For. Councillor Tamlin. Against. Councillor Parsons. Against. And Councillor Batters. For. This application has been refused by 10 votes to 5 with no abstentions, Chairman. Thank you very much. OK, we move on to item two on the list, which is um, PA 20 08762. Uh, 08762 um, Celtic or Celtic Park, Lower Metherill, Callington. And it's being presented by Tracy Young. Good morning to you, Tracy. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, members. Can you all hear me and can you see my screen? Yes, can hear and see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this application seeks outline consent for the construction of a single dwelling yes. on land to the west of Lower Metherill, Callington. The key issues for consideration when assessing the principle of this site for housing development are the location of the site, the principle of development in accordance with the Cornwall local plan policies and other material considerations, the development of the land for residential use and the potential impacts on the setting of the rural landscape and the planning history. So this is the uh, location, the location site uh, to the west of Lower Metherill. Um, this is Higher Metherill here. The application site is not within a designated landscape. The World Heritage site um, sits to the north. Uh, this is a county wildlife site down to the south and the southwest. Uh, the site plan shows the application site again. Uh, this is Collie Park to the east. Um, the Walled Garden property is another dwelling there to the northwest. Uh, these buildings are, uh, is an, this is a small agricultural uh, stone barn, which you'll see in the photographs uh, when I come to it. 
This is the this is a, a shed which had previous planning permission, I think, for a stable. Uh, this is a um, polytunnel, and these are just some timber outbuildings. The um, if I would just move on to the aerial photograph, uh, you can see that the you can see the shape of the village. Uh, this is Cully Park being the last property to the west of the site. Uh, this piece of land here is not within the applications the application site or the ownership of the applicant. You can see this from the application site plan. So the, app the application site is this area outlined in red and the rest of the land outlined in blue is owned by the applicant. This piece of land here is almost like a buffer to the um, properties to the uh, to the east. Again, this is just agricultural land to the west. You'll, you'll, this is just a stone barn that um, sits adjacent to the highway. These so the photographs just show the lane. Um, this is the application site entrance. This is the uh, small uh, stone barn which sits to the west of the site. Um, again, the application site is here and sits behind this Cornish hedge. And this is the lane looking back up towards the village. Um, this, this is roughly where Cully Park and site entrance sits. So looking into the site towards the southeast boundary, I apologise for the quality of the photographs. Some of them are quite blurry. Um, it doesn't help the fact, I think, when we blow them up for the presentation. So looking down towards the southeast boundary, uh, you can see the site is generally, um, it slopes away down towards the, south, the southeast boundary. There's the polytunnel, um, which it sits in the middle of the site. There's some children's swings and domestic paraphernalia. Again, looking towards the southwest boundary, um, there's a few items, the children's trampoline, some beehives. This, apologies for this, the quality of this photograph. Um, it does, you can see this is down at the, standing down at the bottom of the site, looking back up towards the site entrance, which is here. Um, this is where Cully Park is. Uh, I think that's Cully Park there, actually, because they've got quite a few outbuildings in there. Um, Curlidge. This is the view towards the northeast boundary. Uh, this boundary line here is the um, the edge of the application site. The field beyond that is the is the piece of land that's not within the applicant's ownership. Uh, this is the the application site. This there's a, there's an enforcement notice that's been issued on this application site, um, which I'll go into in some details in a few moments, but. This is the this timber shed here is where the applicant is living at the moment, um, using it almost like a day room and then using the, the touring caravan as uh, sleeping accommodation. You can see there's other domestic paraphernalia that's within the site area. This is the boundary hedge to the to the road. And then obviously this this is the road that leads back up to the village. Again, just other outbuildings that are and sheds that are in the site area. This is the, the gate entrance to the site. So I'll go on to the uh, balance, balance of considerations. The proposal seeks outline permission for the construction of a single dwelling. The application site forms part of an agricultural field on the western side of the village of Lower Metherill. The land boundaries to three sides comprise natural field hedging. The top of the field abuts the boundary of the dwelling known as Cully Park to the east. To the north of the site, to, sorry, to the north, the site is bounded beyond the hedge by the highway and to the west gives way to open countryside. The site comprises a number of structures, including a corrugated metal building located at the northeast of the site, along with the touring caravan. At present, the corrugated timber shed is currently occupied as an unlawful dwelling by the applicant and her family. The touring caravan is used as overspill accommodation. The unauthorised use, use of the site for residential purposes is currently the subject of an enforcement notice under reference EN 19 00865. An appeal has been submitted against the enforce, for enforcement notice. The appeal is pending determination. Despite the presence of these structures and other domestic paraphernalia, the remainder of the site is considered agricultural in character. The construction of a dwelling on this site would extend the built form of the settlement into the open countryside and would not be considered to meet the criteria for rounding off or infill under policy three. The presence of a new dwelling on this site would be at odds with the pattern of the settlement in the area, extending the built form into the open countryside. 
eroding rather than maintaining the rural nature of the site, which would be contrary to policy 23 of the Cornwall local plan. Um, there's uh, some information came in um, during the Christmas break, um, so um, which was uh, received with, by myself yesterday. So rather than a, um, a written update, I'll do, just do the verbal update to that, which is that since the agenda was finalised, the applicant has submitted further information to support the proposal. The applicant suggests the land should be considered as previously developed land as it is not used for agricultural purposes, but instead that it was last used for equestrian purposes. The additional information includes a letter from a local resident and from the previous landowner, a Mr Cleave. On the 30th of January 2017, following a complaint to the council's enforcement team, the previous landowner signed a planning contravention notice declaration in which he states that between December 2014 and the 30th of January 2017, the land outlined in red is used for the breeding of lambs, poultry and growing organic vegetables. This signed declaration confirms that the last use of the land was for the purpose of agriculture, not for equestrian purposes as claimed. The fact that the applicant is currently residing on the site without planning permission does not change the lawful status of the land as agricultural, as confirmed in writing by the previous owner in 2017. Without any evidence in the form of the lawful development certificate, the planning authority has no overriding evidence to suggest the site is anything other than agricultural land. For the reasons set out above, the application is recommended for refusal as set out in the committee report before members today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Tracy. Um, our first speaker. Sorry, is somebody speaking? No. Sorry, I thought I heard somebody speaking. Um, there's no representative from the parish uh, council because that's part of your uh, agenda report. So we start with the the applicant. I think is Katie Bolton. Are you there, Katie? Good morning to you. Yes, I am. Hello there. Good morning, Katie. You have three minutes to talk to us. Um, we'll give you a 30 second warning before the end. Um, okay. And if you'd like to hold on at the end of it for any questions that might be forthcoming. Um, yes. When you're ready, away you go. Thank you very much. Lovely. Dear President, um, Chairman, Vice Chairman and members of the Planning Committee. Thank you for listening to my, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I sold my accommodation in Plymouth, Celtic Park, and moved to Celtic Park, Lower Mesville, with my daughters in February 2019. My daughters and I live in the stable building on the site where we have a kitchen, bedroom, living area, toilet and shower. The caravan on site is also used for my bedroom um, and my daughters, but it's very basic. This is where we, are, we own... <laughs> This is where I own. I only own this home. I do not live or rent anywhere else. Since moving to Celtic Park, our lives have changed for the better. I have six daughters, 21, 16, 13, 11, and a set of twins aged nine. My five youngest have made friendship groups within the village and the surrounding areas. They all, have attend, they all attend local schools, which are Callington Community College, and the twins go to... to uh, St Dominic CAB School. This is where I've applied to become a parent governor. My eldest is at University in Wales studying criminal justice law. The children have settled extremely well into their local schools. I've decided to move away from the city to give the girls a better quality of life, more open space and valuable life experiences along with the way with many great memories. This is also how and also how important family life really is. We grow our own fruit and vegetables and have a few animals which include sheep, chickens, honeybees, cats and dogs. Since moving onto the land, I've planted native hedgerow, wildlife attracting plants and many fruit trees, along with many other types of trees. I've applied for planning permission to build a new family home which will be well designed and I will remove existing mixture of buildings from the site. In order to do this, I believe this will help improve the appearance of the site. I know I've made a mistake moving straight onto the land um, 
and I'm sorry if that's caused concern. I'm very worried about the enforcement notice that's been served, which could lead to me and my daughters losing our home. This would also be very disruptive to the children's education as they would have to move schools. I don't understand a lot about planning, but I've employed a planning consultant to help me. I understand that the site actually touches onto the village and already so has buildings on it. That is, that is brownfield land, which planning rules could allow me to have a house built on it. I'm looking to be allowed the opportunity to put things right and make it my long term family home. I think I've shown commitment to living as part of the village and really want to continue to make it our future. And I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. If you can hold for the moment in case there are any questions for you. Yep. Any questions for clarification purposes, please? Um, Jim, here, I'd like to ask one, please. Yes, OK, Jim, go ahead. Yep. Um, as the uh, divisional member, I will not be able to take um, um, a vote on this, but I would like to ask the applicant. Um, it's, it's stated here that uh, uh, one of the objectives put down that you own a house in South Ash, is that correct? No, it's not correct. I don't live anywhere or rent or own anywhere else. Okay. Um, and the, the building actually had planning permission before you bought it for domestic use. I know that um, when I spoke to the previous applicant, um, the previous person that actually owned the land, Christopher Cleave, he he was living there. Yes, he was living there for approximately, I think it was a, nearly two years or a year and a half he was actually living there. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Okay, are there any other questions for clarification of the speaker, please? Nothing shown, Vice Chair, is that correct? That's correct, Chairman. Thank you. In that case, we thank you very much, Carla. Uh, sorry, Katie. If you'd like to That's hold right. on, you can obviously listen in on live stream, listen in and yep. watch and see what happens with it. But thank you very much for attending today. Lovely. Thank you ever so um, much. Take care. OK, Bye. thank you. Bye. We now move across to Councillor Fashman, the divisional officer. Um, we will give you the usual five minutes, Jim. If you can ensure you wind up in that time, much appreciated. Across to you. Yeah, I'm a, I'm the uh, divisional member, not the officer chairman. No, oh, yes, that's true. Slip of the tongue. <laughs> uh, the land in question originally belonged to the property next door. Uh, Mr. Hun retired, and uh, over a period of time, he decided to um, sell off the land. Most of the land runs right down to the stream. The road that runs down to Coteo opposite St Dominic Park. Um, a horticultural Mr Nigel Hun bought the bottom parcel of land and the top piece that was left was split up into three individual plots and as we can read on the uh, agenda um, the person that was living in a caravan there that actually got game planning permission for um, domestic use of the shed, um, be it um, uh, toilets, showers and wash up. Um, uh, the applicant has been forced basically because of the amount of people living there, um, which are basically a homeless family, have had to use the shed as part of their domestic um, use, obviously, because the showers and toilets are in there and the kitchen. And because the number of children there, they've had to utilise it as a bedroom and the caravan is obviously sleeping quarters for the overspill. Um, this is uh, against the development boundary of Metherill Village. Um, um, South of Park is actually um, put up against the application site. This is a very small end of the field which has good access onto the road and I think that the shed has got the own repair to do anything to turn it into a dwelling or enlarge it and it would seem only sensible to um, uh, remove all the paraphernalia and build a nice tidy suitable dwelling for this family. Um, I know it's not a planning reason but I do feel very strongly that 
another uh, move for the family with the children, now they're settled in the uh, schools locally, would be a complete upset, especially with the times we're having at the moment. And I think that we'd look forward probably to the decision of enforcement, but that probably would fail if we decided that that is close enough to the boundary of the village. Now, um, the parish council's um, um, plan, parish plan, does say that they would support uh, dwellings on the edge of the village, but when it went to the parish council meeting, uh, due to this lockdown, there were very few councillors at that meeting and unfortunately the ward members, as far as I know, were not present to, to help to support this application and it failed. Um, I would like to uh, um, recommend that if, if the councillors are of a mind to support this application, is, as like I said in the last um, application that came in, that a hard boundary should be built and that would be the end of the development on to the west side of that uh, boundary of Metherill Village. Uh, it's a nice straight road with easy access onto it, be it um, a single track for, for lorries, but there is plenty of room for two cars to pass on that road. Highways have got no objections against it. And a bungalow built with some um, low level roof would actually uh, be um, unvisible from any uh, vantage point in the area. It's in beyond a, a large hedge. It's surrounded by hedges all the way around. And I think that we ought to be supporting this application. If anybody would like to ask me any questions, I would be um, ready to answer them. I think it meets uh, the NPPF, where it's previous developed land. Um, the agricultural side of it is questionable because all agricultural land has to have a holding number and from my inquiries there's no holding number in it so it would be immunity land and not agricultural. Um, there's much more I can say about it really. If anybody would like any questions, Fine, thank I'm you. Prepared to answer them. Fine, thank you. Um, if there are no questions for Councillor Fashman, we will move on to Questions of the case officer. There's nothing showing here for questions. I'm correct, Vice Chair. Correct, Chair. Ah, sorry. Ah. Well, we've just had two ah, hands come up, Chairman, but I'm not oh, sure. Oh, they've obviously got lazy arms. The hands have come up late. Okay, it's uh, Councillor Eddie first, followed by Councillor Fitter. Thank you, Chairman. No, my arm's working perfectly well. It's just um, the, the, the things are a bit sticky. Jim, um, Councillor Flashman, is there any proposed affordable housing developments in Metherall or within, say, a mile or two of, of that village? Well, the closest affordable housing that um, comes to mind is at Highfield at uh, Delaware or St Anne's Chapel. And most of those are one and two bedroom properties. And this family would clearly need three to four bedroom property. And uh, there's a, nothing that is suitable um, that is going to be available in the short term because they aren't built yet. Um, there are one or two small single and double bedroom properties at St Dominic, but they're usually snapped up before they're built. So it, it is really, a, a, a you know, um, a, a really hard and difficult um, area to find affordable housing to fit a larger family. Okay, Martin. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Jim. Councillor Fitter, John. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, my hand was too fast. I anticipated you were going to go on to the planning officer, Tracy. Uh, and that right, was my okay, question well, was directed to. So sorry, right, sir. Okay. In, in that case, John, it, there's nobody else with any questions for, for Jim. So we'll go to you for questions of, of the case officer for clarification. Thank, Thank you. you, Chris, very much indeed. Um, Tracy, could, could you just um, go over the, this um, decoration that you received, which was, I believe, in 2000, not you received, but you um, found a decoration that was signed in 2017. I just wonder, could you just reconfirm, so I've got it, that this decoration would indicate that this land was in agricultural use at that time. Is that correct? 
Um, thank you, John. Uh, Councillor Fitter. <laughs> yeah, it was um, the the enforcement notice um, was served or the PCM was served on the previous landowner, Mr Cleave, <clears throat> following a complaint to the council that he was living on the land. Um, from, from, from what I recall from the um, signed notice, he bought the land in 2014. He moved on to the land in 2016 and was living in the caravan without planning permission. Um, the, obviously, the complaint came in uh, late uh, 2016, and then he uh, was sent um, the PCN to sign to for clarification. And in that clarification, he does state, and I've read the I've read the um, notice that the land is used for breeding of lambs, poultry, and growing organic vegetables. Um, he does say that previously, before he bought the land, it was used for grazing of horses but the, the overriding use of the land remains as agricultural. Thanks very much indeed for that clarity. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, John. Councillor Holly, Derek. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, that sort of helped a bit, Tracy, but uh, <laughs> Jim and uh, the, uh, the lady applicant referred to domestic, existing domestic use of the shed, and that's confused me. And if you have clarified this, I'm really sorry, but could you re clarify it again? Is there any existing domestic use of the properties on this application site, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor. The uh, planning application PA 1610367 grants you planning permission for the polytunnel. This would be for Mr. Cleave, um, and installation of washing and toilet facilities in the existing stable stroke outbuilding. For the use in conjunction with the small holding it does there's no reference to domestic use okay that's clarified that nicely thank you very much indeed thank you are there any other questions yes. for the case officer could i have a question please chairman yes jim yeah um would the plan and officer um uh be uh interested in the shed being converted or would they uh, think that the shed was unsuitable for uh, development well thank you councillor well the the applications for outline planning on no. the on change of use of land for a dwelling which it's not the the use of the buildings for residential is not not for consideration i think i think as you well know jim we have to judge it on what's in front of us now it's not what may happen next week or next year well, I'm, I'm okay. just, I'm just trying to point out. Yeah, I know, but we have to judge it on what's in front of us today, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. okay. Uh, yeah. So there are no other no other questions for the case officer showing on my screen. Is that correct, Vice Chair? Correct, Chair. If I could ask Councillor Holly to take it. Oh yeah, but, yeah. No. Derek, if you could drop your no. hand, please. Um, so with with regards to this one. You know, here we are now with a set of circumstances surrounding the application. There was a set of circumstances surrounding the last application with regards to family welfare, etc. But we have to look at this on a planning situation on, on the on the grounds of the planning application. Davina or Tracy, would you like to come in here and outline everything in connection with this particular application, enforcement and everything, so everyone is perfectly clear of where we're standing before we we start going into general debate. Um, yes, certainly, um, Chairman, I don't mind doing that. Um, so it's, I, I guess there's not a lot more to add. I think Tracy has really pointed the situation out. Um, obviously, um, there's an ongoing unauthorised use of the land. Um, the council have served an enforcement notice against the use of that land. And that enforcement notice is currently the subject of an appeal. As part of that appeal, um, the applicants um, are arguing ground A, i.e. they're arguing that planning permission should be granted. So the outcome of that appeal um, will consider um, the suitability of the use of the land for residential purposes, um, i.e. does the proposal accord with policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan. Um, so, so obviously now we're faced with a planning application, outline planning application for a new dwelling on the site. Um, the, the key consideration is, um, is this an infill or rounding off development? Um, obviously, each case must be considered on its own merits, as I'm sure the lawyer um, 
Vanessa will point out, um, you know, the enforcement process is separate from the planning process um, and that there's two separate routes to follow. Um, but in debating this matter and considering this application, members should be mindful of the ongoing enforcement action that has been taken. Thank you. Thank you, Davina. Vanessa, would you wish to add anything to that from the legal side? I think I think Davina sort of summarised it perfectly, really. Um, you know, obviously there, there is an enforcement um, process running, but um, members do need to consider what's in front of them under under the policy um, because those are two separate two separate processes, I'm afraid. Fine. Thank you very much. In that case, we now go into open debate. Uh, who would like to? Um, Councillor Jordan has got his hand up to open the debate. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've listened to what the lady said very carefully. I've read all the papers that have been sent out and I've listened to what's been said this morning. Whilst I feel very, very sorry for the lady, I think we have to go along with the Office of Recommendations, so therefore I remove refusal. Thank you, Barry. Um, we have Councillor John Fitter. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I would, if that was a proposal for refusal, I would certainly second it. Um, you know, it's another tragic case that if we were allowed to um, determine applications with a compassionate ground and depart from policy, then I suspect we would be supporting this lady. But that is not what we're here for. We're here to judge an application on policy. And clearly, um, the officer, Tracy, has made it quite clear in the same logical way that this application cannot be approved as it stands. And um, I, I, the interesting thing also, of course, is that um, if localism is to mean anything, then certainly Carl Stott Parish Council um, do not support the application. And I'm sure they would be sympathetic if they could. And even though we, it's um, moderate to um, maximum weight we can give to their plan, if the parish plan has been finally signed off, then that will be another reason for it to be refused. So certainly I have no hesitation in support of the officer and second in the resolution. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. Uh, Councillor May, Mary. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I think it's all been said, um, but I will be supporting the officer as recommended. But, but right. feel very sorry for the applicant. Yes, I, I think I think you're right. I think we, we all do under these circumstances, but we know why we are here. It's all based on planning legislation. Um, are there any, uh, Councillor Burton, your hand has just shot yeah. up. Just, just a quickie, could we, after we've voted on this, could we have a little chat about this type of site? Because I've got lots of them in my division now and, and, I, and I think we need to be very clear on how we handle these because I think people are under the impression that if they get a caravan on site and a few pigs or something that they can then build a house and I think we've got to sort it out. Thank you. Okay, we can have a look at that after the meeting. That's fine. Um, Councillor Holly, Derek, your hand's gone up. It's just to say, Mr Chairman, that the, the local plan, I've looked at some other local plans, including um, adjoining counties. Our local plan is quite clear in this respect about what's right and what's wrong and what's permitted and what's not permitted. And uh, I don't see anything in our local plan that would allow this site to be used. And as you say, we've all got great compassion for the situation, but we've got to look at the Cornwall in the future and what we want it to look like. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Derek. Um, now, once your hand is down, Derek, I don't see other, any other hands up. So is that it from everyone before we? No hands have gone up. Is that correct, Vice Chair? Correct, Chairman. Thank you. In that case, we have a proposal by Councillor Jordan, seconded by Councillor Fitter for refusal in line with officer recommendation. Pass it across to you, Rowena, for the roll call, please. Thank you. When I call your name, please indicate how you wish to vote either for, against or abstaining. Councillor Burden. For refusal. Councillor Craker. For. Councillor Eddy. For. Councillor Fitter. For. Councillor Holly. For. Councillor Jordan. For. Councillor Long. For. Councillor May. For. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Pascoe. For. Councillor Pugh. For Councillor Tamlin. For Councillor Parsons. For and Councillor Batters. For. Thank you. That is unanimously refused the application, Chairman. Thank you very much. 
Um, in that case, members, uh, there is no other business on the agenda for today. I thank you for your attendance and um, I uh, hope you'll all stay safe and see you at future meetings. So we'll wait now. If you can remember, we are live at the moment until Emma tells us otherwise. So if you could restrain from any comments or any uh, any noise, perhaps. Cross to you, Emma. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I'll confirm once the live stream has ended. So if you could just hold off on debate. Fine, thank you.